Um, thank you very much, George. Um, can everyone hear me? I think, okay, now, now, now you can hear me, okay. Thanks, George, for the intro. Um, hello, everyone. Hello again. Um, so, it's me, Ioannis Paprikas. I'm a product director in Orpheum, and I'm on catalog management. And today, we're, we're going to talk about product strategy. Um, before we start, something that we're not going to talk about today, in this session at least. We're not going to talk about OKRs, roadmaps, um, North Star, metrics. This is everything that, uh, that any company can do. It's like the books. You can read it in any book there. Um, you can have a framework. You can have a tool, uh, click up Jira, whatever. Um, and OK, there are ways to actually do this. So what we will discuss here today is how we have all the input from our industry, how Orpheum works, how we actually learn from the industry, we learn from ourselves, and we actually provide all the information to create our strategy. And this is the most difficult part that we do in Orpheum for many reasons. We will discuss them in this uh, presentation. Before we begin, just one question. Do we have any Formula One fans here? Can we raise hands? Formula One? Okay, we have some. <laughs> right. So, I can briefly explain what's Formula One. Uh, in Formula One, basically, you have a car. You have to go through the, some laps, some kilometers. And, of course, because you have tires and they just have to be changed, you have to make some pit stops, right? When you do the pit stop, it's very important. So, even if you have the fastest car out there, if you don't have a good strategy for the pit stops, which is usually the principles, the team principles are decision, things might go bad, bad for you. And this is an example of Ferrari uh, last year, where they actually had a very good car, they had the fastest car out there, but because of bad decisions in how in, and when to make the pit stops, they actually lo lost their win for both driver and the constructor championship. So even if you have the best team of engineers, the best team of, uh, team of data, of uh, design, they can run as fast as you can provide the context for them, provide a good strategy, guidelines, context from the, from the business and from the industry. So let's start about what is Orpheum and how the music industry works. It's not about only the music that we hear. We have Spotify, we have YouTube, Apple Music. This is the, the easy part, the front part, where everyone just clicks one button, the music is streamed, and you can hear about the music. But on the back end, you have an entire supply chain of information, of data, how they go from each part to another, and in the end, royalties are getting paid, are being paid to creators and artists. So you have the media, you have uh, the global registry of copyrights, and then you have the license hub, where you, you can actually purchase a license. And then you have to go all the way to tracking what was actually played. You know, if you have a song which is called Shape of You, it's like a, a famous internal example of Shape of You from Ed Sheeran. There's no single song called Shape of You. There are many. So you have to actually know what's exactly uh, the exact song and actually pay the, the creators. Everything that you see here, every arrow that you see, is an exchange of information where different companies, different standards, different societies come in place and they define their own rules. So the main question is how you actually build a product for this? How you actually build your services for this? Orpheum grew a lot in the past, in the past years. We came to become one of the most strategic partners on YouTube for our clients and we serve one of the biggest clients, the majors, actually, in the music industry. We have Warner, we have Sony, we have Universal, and they are like, they need things. They need to actually serve uh, the royalties and to actually generate billions of dollars. Growth, business is leading forward right now. How, how can the product go with the business? How can the product 
go one step ahead and help the business instead of the business telling us what to do. So, this is our strategy. How we define it is the get big lead and expand strategy. Get big on royalties. We need to track every royalty that you have out there. Basically, we need to inspire the teams. Everything that you do is in favor of royalties. Yes, no, then choose. Right? So we need to understand better the problems of our customers. Money is not getting paid. Creators are not being paid. And they have issues. Or even, even if they are paid, they are not paid every month, like you are, like we are. We need to lead monetization, speed, accuracy, quality, and responsiveness. Even if we actually distribute everything, um, if it takes us six months, that's six months of someone not being paid. And of course, we need to expand new platforms and new uh, markets, and new territories, new countries. Right now, we operate only in the US, but every country has its own rules, so it's a whole new, new world for that. So here are the challenges. So we have the industry. It's a complex industry, very complex. It was created by uh, lawyers with so many complicated rules and how everything works, and we have all this society. So this is a big thing. We need to ab abide to these rules. It's not like that you create a new marketplace, you don't create a new mobile application. You have to abide by the rules, so we have to always be out there and listen to the industry. We have the market. The digital era is growing a lot. We know it, we know it. The thing is how we can adapt to new platforms. We have, uh, okay, we, we have YouTube, we have Spotify, we have TikTok. Everything, everywhere where music is being played, regardless must be paid as well. And in the end, we have the prosumers, who we call them, it's the users. We have internal users in Orpheum that actually run our customers. And they are like the, the front of us. They, they take every challenge that we have, they take every difficulty, and they actually serve the users, and we have to actually serve for them. They have all these problems, and sometimes business says, okay, let's do this thing, let's do the other thing, and the product cannot be fast enough. And how we do it? So, how we do it? So far, we have been trying to influence the industry. Influence the industry is actually being, means to participate in everything that happens out there. We have um, seminars, we have uh, conferences like this one, especially for music. So we need to take people there and to actually learn more things about this and we can influence this. We have, we're members in a lot of things. So basically, influencing the industry actually shapes our own roadmap. We, have, we need to have attention to detail. Even a slightest bug or somewhere that even takes one cent from a transaction, it's like a bank. You might end losing millions and you have issues. So we, may, we have to make a difference and to make attention to detail. For example, as I said earlier, the example of Shape of You, when we get usage from, um, from the digital service providers, how we call them, the YouTube, Spotify, and so on and so forth, we need to have specific attention to detail to make sure that we match the, exactly the same song that they should, it should be paid. This is a lot of challenge, I would say. We have machine learning algorithms, we have AI algorithms, networks uh, on the back end to work for us, so we have to check everything. We need also to evolve again and again and again. As I said earlier, it's the digital era. We cannot stay static. New industries, new platforms are being created every day. As I said before, we have to be out there, talk with everyone, and then come back here and say, okay, here, TikTok is doing this. Spotify is doing that, Twitch is doing this, the other thing. We need to create those, those connections. And finally, we need to fail. We have failed in the past. We have created big bets and things didn't work out. Of course, there are politics. Uh, there are big players that might influence how companies work. And you might need to close your company because of that. If you have, as I said, the majors and they choose one company over the other, that's not always very good. So, we failed. 
we got we had we have uh, big lessons from that, and we adapt and we continue, and we fail big and small. It's not just a bug or a feature that's not adopted by the users. Finally, we need to inspire. As I said in the beginning, even if you have the fastest car, if you, if you don't have the, a good strategy and to know to communicate this strategy to your team, things are gonna probably going to fail. So we need to inspire. We need to lead the teams with the right context. We are going this direction or the other direction. Okay, so we can empower them to make the right decisions on everything that we build, from design, engineering, from algorithms, from everything. Okay, and expose them out there. We need to communicate transparently. transparently. We have a culture of communication in Orpheum where every decision that we do, it's being broadcasted. We try to avoid silos. And we do this freely. This is what we try to do. Um, and we believe the teams feel more empowered. And finally, empathize with our users. Every day we have, this, we have a balance. Our users' problems versus our business. Because, you know, business is moving forward, OK? They are not going to wait for us. So we need to empathize with our users. We need to know their problems, to be user-obsessed. We are not a B2C company, even a B2B. We are an enterprise company because we build for the majors. So, as I said, we have the prosumers and we have to, to take care for them. If we don't, they leave and they stop using our pro product. And then everything is falling down. So, to summarize, you have to embrace your growth. You cannot be a stopper for your growth. This affects a lot how you operate. So sometimes you have this discussion saying, okay, yes, the growth is going, but the product is here. Okay, we have to follow and lead. Um, we have to create a daily strategy, get big, lead, and expand. Um, we need to take up all the challenges that we have. You know, when you have problems and you have challenges even with the, the tasks that you have, you have the easy tasks and the big tasks. And the hard, take the hard first. Because if you challenge those and you tackle those, then the small ones will be like, done. Find our way to the top. As I said before, fail, fail, fail again and again and again. Um, as a product, basically, our impact and our value to the company is not by the deliverables. It's about the impact that we make to the company. So make the test. Have your program, your product, the success that you're expecting. Are you influencing your users in the industry? It's okay. You don't you don't do that right now. You got the lesson. Move forward. And finally, inspire your teams. We are our teams. We want to embrace and to give them the, the right context for everything that we do, and we want to inspire. Thanks a lot. That part with Ferrari killed me, actually, but anyway, I'll try to forget it. Uh, there is a question for you. You don't yes. have to leave yet. Of course. Uh, would you say that Orpheum as a tech startup, uh, sorry, you say that Orpheum, you're a tech startup, so your main competitors are IFPI, like traditional copyright holders, for example? Uh, it's about competition. We have a lot of competitors. IFPI is not exactly a competitor. It's some, something that we use for our information to get from. All right. So, so yeah. who, who would you consider your competitor? Then I guess that's the question from Staffis. We have eyes. We have some companies that are there, like uh, there are a lot of companies there. Okay, cool. And I have a question. Yes. Uh, which is you talked about failure, oh, and there is another one coming. Good. So I'll go with the, you know, with the um, audience first. So in enterprise B two B companies development and sales cycle development cycle is long. How do you handle low morale and disappointment when the product fail? How do you handle it, sorry? Disappointment and low morale when the products fail. Uh, it's something that we should embrace. Uh, basically, um, we do a lot of things right, like this. We have cycles where uh, some things are not being delivered. Um, teams need to be inspired. 
basically what we do is, and what we say is, so we, we have cycles, okay? We have six week cycles right now okay. we're working on. So if something is not delivered, we actually get the extra time to actually deliver. Um, and then we actually communicate, hey, this is gonna take one more week, two more weeks, and we will actually deliver. Um, well, failures are not easy. We have learned a lot. We have built a learning culture where we actually um, analyze what went wrong. If it's a business, then it's not a far power. Sometimes, sometimes you lose trust to the company, but mm. sometimes you gain trust because they actually say, okay, we have an obstacle uh, that's gone. Okay, we tried it, we failed it, then go forward. All right. Cool. That leads nice way to my question, which was, you talked a lot about failure, which is also something I, I'm going to talk later. Uh, how, do you, how do you create a safe environment? How do you encourage your people to try and fail and not go for the perfect solution from the first time, on, you know, on the okay. first try? First of all, we don't have a blame culture. Okay. We don't uh, point finger everything that, was, that failed. We don't say, hey, George failed or John failed or whoever failed. Um, we work as a team, the team succeeds and the team fails, okay. And of course we have the leaders, but this is a different discussion. Uh, so, as I said before, we have a discussion, we have the analysis of what went wrong, and we don't actually uh, point fingers. We said, okay, guys, that, that, that failed, that didn't go as planned, and okay, let's immediately plan the next step. We don't, we don't fire people for that. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, great. Thanks a lot again, Thank John. You. Thank you.